past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. Here's my contact information. The best way to get in touch with me is through Discord. My name on Discord is Doug P. Also in BookMap Discord, there's an options dash Doug chat channel. That's a great place to post questions, comments, and content related to the topics of my presentation and the topics of the channel that I'll go through in just a moment. I'm also on X. My name there is at Doug Pless. And I do have an announcement today. Bookmap is trying to encourage everyone to participate in the Discord stream, in the Bookmap Discord. Uh, there are a couple things related to this. First of all, Bookmap Discord, you do need to subscribe to Bookmap. If you do not have Global or Global Plus, there is a free digital version. So you do need to subscribe, but there is a free version that you can subscribe to. And then you need to verify your account to join in chat and watching the stream at Bookmap Discord. So again, I'm encouraging everyone, Bookmap is encouraging everyone to join us in Discord. It's a much better streaming experience, no lag in Discord. I know there's a, a little bit of extra steps on your part. Uh, that will only be one time. You have to subscribe to Bookmap. If you don't already subscribe, you can subscribe to the free version, join Bookmap Discord, verify your account, and then you're good to go in uh, Bookmap Discord. And also, as part of this, Bookmap has asked me to stop my stream to YouTube at 2.15. Note the entire session will be recorded and available later on YouTube, but during the live session, Bookmap again has asked me to stop streaming at 2.15 p.m. And again, it will be recorded. All right, let's move on. Here are the key tenets to my approach for trading. I believe that options trades and market maker hedging activity are key drivers of price in many stocks and futures, certainly in the large cap tech stocks that I trade and follow, as well as the equity index futures like the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. And for the S&P 500, SPX is the underlying index, SPY is the ETF version of that index, and the ES futures contract is a derivative of SPX. And when traders buy and sell puts and calls in SPX and SPY, market makers take the opposite side of those trades and they hedge their delta exposure with ES futures. And for the NASDAQ 100, NDX is the underlying index. QQQ is the much more liquid ETF version of that index. And when traders and QQQ NQ is a derivative of NDX. And when traders buy and sell puts and calls in NDX and QQQ, Market makers take the opposite side of those trades and they hedge their delta exposure with NQ futures. The focus of my presentation and the focus of the options dash jug chat channel is options order flow, the impact of options markets on stocks and futures, and the influence of market maker hedging flow on price action. I have a two step process for trading. The first is planning, and I use positional analysis. I look at how traders and market makers are positioned to the options market and how those positions change from day to day to develop a thesis regarding the expected trading range and volatility for the day, as well as a directional bias. And the second step in my process is execution. I look at real-time order flow and book map and real-time market maker hedging flow on Spot Gamma Hero to confirm my thesis and for setups. And when I talk about setups today, I will be focusing on an underlying asset. Setups in that asset can be taken with futures contracts, shares of stock, or options, depending on the asset and the way you like to trade. Questions and comments are welcome. And I will be watching both the options dash jug chat channel, as well as the chat and YouTube for your questions and comments. Please feel free to post. I'll do my best to answer your questions. Here's my agenda for today, Wednesday, August 28th. 
First of all, I want to go over news items, economic data, events, and earnings for the week. Then I'll go through my positional analysis. Then I'll review some setups from earlier today. And I will try and do all of that by 2.15 and then go uh, to the live market at 2.15 when I cut off uh, the YouTube stream. All right, let's start with news items, economic data, events and earnings for the week. First of all, the earnings event of the century, NVIDIA reports earnings after the market closes. All the financial news outlets are talking about it. Uh, CNBC, CNBC has a countdown to <coughs> NVIDIA earnings. Other headlines indicate NVIDIA earnings loom. And then a spot gamma has devoted the entire, almost the entire AM Founders note, which is almost always devoted to the S&P 500. Today it is in, uh, devoted to NVIDIA. All right, uh, for the rest of the week, uh, there is some data coming out. So tomorrow, and NVIDIA earnings are reported after the market closes today. And according to Spot Gamma, the expected move is plus or minus 9%. All right, tomorrow GDP and jobless claims come out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Jobless claims in the recent weeks has been a, uh, have, has moved from a low impact event to a high impact event. And then on Friday, big data release for the week. The PCE data comes out at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time and Michigan Consumer Sentiment at 10 a.m. Also note on Friday, I will not be streaming. I'm gonna take a long weekend Monday is the, the Labor Day holiday in the United States, so I will not be streaming on Monday, uh, when, Friday, or, uh, Friday or Monday, and I will be back a week from today, next Wednesday. All right, so again, I will not be here on Friday and Monday, and I'll be back on Wednesday. All right, so that wraps up the week. Now let's move on to positional analysis. Let's start with the S&P 500. This is the ES Futures and Book Map. And give me just a moment. Hello, VGT Cafe. And hello, Hector. Welcome. Glad you're here. All right, so let's move on to positional analysis now. I'm going to start with the S&P 500. This is the ES Futures and Book Map. And before I take a closer look at this chart, I do want to take a look at a higher time frame. I'm going to go to the SPX, the underlying index. This is a one-day chart in Thinkorswim, SPX one-day chart. This year, a rally that, that began last year continued up till April 1st. Correction began, and then the rally resumed on the Monday after the April options expiration, put dominated options expiration. Next correction began July 17th. This was the Wednesday before the options expiration on Friday. This was the VIX expiration. That's when the correction began. Let's pick this up now on a one hour chart. Go to a SPX one hour chart. So again, the correction began, VIX expiration, July 17th. SPX made a low of 51.19. That was the weekend after the uh, yen carry trade unwind. Rally resumed, came back, tested the 5200 put wall at the time. Now SPX is consolidating. It has been, the consolidation has been really between around 55.50 and 56.50. 5,600 being in the middle of that, that is the absolute gamma strike. More on that in just a moment. All right, so as I mentioned, 5,600 is the absolute gamma strike. So let's look at the levels on this chart. 
First of all, the dash purple lines. are showing the lower and upper weekly expected move. That's based on the options market, based on the closing price, based on the closing price for SPX from last Friday. All right, um, Carmo Trade says, uh, hey, Doug, welcome. I'm glad you're here. YouTube streaming is breaking and lagging. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I'm watching the YouTube stream as well as on another computer. I'm sorry, there's nothing that I can do about that. Uh, that has been an ongoing issue. Again, Bookmap is encouraging everyone to join us on Discord for better streaming, streaming experience, a better experience uh, all around. I know it uh, is a little bit more convenient sometime to uh, just join me on YouTube. There's nothing that I can do about this. <clears throat> um, so please join us on Discord. Uh, w Black, welcome. Glad you're here. Yeah, there's too much buffering on YouTube. I'm not sure what the uh, uh, what the issue is today, but it is uh, becoming more frequent. W Black, please join us on Discord. Again, for everyone, Bookmap Discord. You do need to subscribe to Bookmap, but there is a free version available. So once you subscribe to Bookmap, free version if you want. You need to verify your account, join Discord, verify your account, and you can join the stream in Discord for, again, a much better experience. All right, sorry about that. All right, so the weekly expected moves shown by the dash purple lines. SPX is trading within that range. The dash blue lines are showing the lower and upper daily expected move. Also based on the options market, that's based on the closing price. From yesterday, I do post those levels in Discord every day. Another reason uh, to join Discord. And SPX is trading below the lower daily expected move today. All right, the dark red lines are showing spot gamma levels on this chart. These are based on gamma weighted open interest. They're provided to spot gamma subscribers. They're available on a variety of trading platforms. Again, this is Thinkorswim a 30-day, one-hour chart. I'm going to point out the key daily levels. First of all, the put wall, that's at 5,300. That's a strike with the largest net negative gamma that can be expected to act as support. Not in play for today. The next level up is the 5,595 volatility trigger. Let me zoom in on this just a little bit. So we can get a closer look at these levels. All right, so again, the put wall at 5,300. Strike with a large net negative gamma. Can be expected to act as support. Above that, volatility trigger at 5,595. That is spot gamma's proprietary volatility and gamma flip level. Below that level, market makers' position on the gamma curve is negative. In a negative gamma environment, market makers have to trade with price to hedge the delta exposure. That tends to enhance or increase volatility. And the volatility triggers and hedge walls for stocks, big theme for today. All right, so SPX now trading below that level. Above that level, at the beginning of the day, Market makers' position on the gamma curve was positive. In a positive gamma environment, market makers have to trade against price to hedge their delta exposure. That tends to subdue or decrease volatility, leading to more mean reverting price action, selling rips and buying dips. And below that level, more trending markets could be up or down, but more uh, larger moves. All right, just above that is the absolute gamma strike that I mentioned before at 5,600. That's a strike with the largest absolute positive and negative gamma, where most of the gamma weighted open interest is concentrated. And especially in a positive gamma environment, that large amount of gamma weighted open interest tends to attract price. All right, then above that, is the call wall at 57.50. That's a strike with largest net positive gamma that can be expected to act as resistance. 
All right, so potential floor at 5,300, potential ceiling at 5,750, and so far price is kind of stuck in a range between 5,550 and mostly 5,600 and 5,650. All right, let's wrap up our view of SBX with a one minute chart. So this is showing the consolidation. Let me zoom in on this just a little bit. Consolidation for the last three days, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, and iron condors, <coughs> zero DTE iron condors were working very well. <coughs> Uh, for those days, looks like it was going to work again today with this very narrow cons uh, consolidation, and then price broke lower, as a lot of the Magnificent 7 stocks broke lower. So now, SBX trading below these key levels. There's the lower daily expected move, the dash blue line, just below that is the that's L1, that's the absolute gamma strike at 5,600. And then the 5,595 volatility trigger that held very well yesterday, a support yesterday. Now it looks like maybe acting as resistance. And this set up a great, great long yesterday support at the 5,595 volatility trigger in a positive gamma environment. All right, so that is the SPX. Again, there were no shifts in levels for SPX. And for SPY, the call wall shifted higher and absolute gamma strike shifted lower. So kind of a wash for SPY. So really uh, a wash for the SPX and SPY. All right, let me post another note in, in YouTube. All right, this is the ES Futures and Book Map. Let's take a look at the levels on this chart, then we'll take a look at setups in a few minutes. All right, so I have my own cloud notes here in the Book Map, so I can show spot gamma levels, uh, SPX levels. There's the 5600 absolute gamma strike that I was talking about earlier the 5595 volatility trigger. I also have SPY levels on this chart. There's the SPY 560 volatility trigger. So now note the SP500 ES is trading both below the SPY and SPX volatility trigger, expecting volatility to increase as price breaks below those levels. Gamma notional becoming negative. Market makers have to trade with price. All right, so the next line of defense here is this 5580 level. And I believe Spot Gamma in the AM Founders note did mention this as a kind of a final line in the sand. Break below that, and they're looking at uh, risk off. All right, so those are the levels in play. Note. ES is also trading below its lower daily expected move, shown by the dash blue line. I do calculate that separately from the from the uh, SPX daily expected moves. And more about setups in a few minutes. So breakdown of the consolidation right around 1045. Break below volat SPY volatility trigger the absolute gamma strike, and then the SBX volatility trigger. And now looking for the 5580 level to, to hold the support. All right, now there is a difference in price between ES and SBX. 
uh, that offset changes a little bit every day. And right now, it is uh, today it's 17 points. So ES minus SBX is 17. All right, let's move on. Let's take a look at NASDAQ again. I'll take a look at setups in a few minutes. NASDAQ was uh, a little bit more clear in the in the break lower. This happened earlier today. Instead of that hour plus long consolidation in the S&P 500, it was pretty clear uh, from the open that uh, in NASDAQ, NQ, QQQ, NDX were bearish, making a series of lower highs. All right, so this is the NQ futures and book map. Again, I have my own cloud notes so I can show QQQ levels. There's the QQQ 476 volatility trigger. Good initial entry point for a short, right around 945. Next at this combo one level for QQQ. All right, so before I go further with this, I do want to, let's do isolate the underlying index levels. This is QQQ, one day, one minute chart. Here's that volatility trigger. Nice entry point for short. Next entry point for short at 475, 474. Combo one, that's uh, 474. Let's see, where is that? Oh, 474.4, combo one, 475, large gamma three. Now it looks like the 470 level has held a support earlier today, and we'll see if that happens again. All right, we'll take a look at NDX, then get back to bookmap. So NDX, Resistance around the 19,500 level. Note NDX, this cluster of levels was important earlier in the week. Let's actually zoom out on that. This cluster of levels, call wallet, absolute gamma strike, call wallet 450, 19,450. down to 440, which is the volatility trigger. Held a support earlier in the week. Now, NDX has broken down below that level. Found resistance at the 385 zero gamma level. So broken down below this cluster of levels again, 450. Call wall, absolute gamma strike, 440. Volatility trigger. So all the index products are now trading below their volatility triggers. All right, back to book map. So again, I have my own cloud notes so I can show these levels. There's the 476 volatility trigger, 475.4 combo one level. And it acted as the secondary entry point for short. Here's that cluster of levels for NDX, 450 absolute gamma strike call wall. Volatility trigger at 440. Looks like the lower daily expected move is right around that level. Then there's the 470 level. QQQ 470, large gamma 2. That was noted as support. That's the last line of support. <coughs> last line of support for QQQ. It looks like now uh, NASDAQ is breaking below that level. And again, we'll take a look at setups in a few minutes. All right, Elizabeth, hello, welcome, glad you're here. 
Elizabeth said, I'm having a difficult time understanding your SPX expected moves. All right, those come from an options market. So let me, let's take a quick look at that and then I'll get to some setups. All right, so we're on SPX here. Let's go to an options chain. All right, so the expected moves just come from the options chain. So tomorrow is the 29th of August. So after the close today, I will look at this number right here. Again, after the close, which is 4.15 p.m. Eastern Time for SPX. And then I will take that number and add it and subtract it to SPX, the closing price, to come up with a daily expected move. And then you can just do the same thing for the weekly expected move. I do have an indicator on my chart that shows the lower and upper weekly expected move. And I just line up my lines for the weekly expected move based on this indicator. All right, so Elizabeth, I hope that, that helps. That's where the expected moves come from. All right, so shifts in levels for NASDAQ. There were none for NDX. Yesterday for QQQ, all four KD levels, volatility trigger, put wall, call wall, absolute gamma strike, move lower. Very bearish for QQQ. I think QQQ closed up yesterday. <laughs> and then today there was a bullish hat trick for QQQ, volatility trigger, call wall, absolute gamma strike, move lower, and of course, <clears throat> order flow and hedging flow did not confirm that at all. Very bearish day for both the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. All right, so we'll take a look at setups in a few minutes. In just a moment, just to wrap up, Take a quick look at Gamma Notional. This is market maker's position on the Gamma curve at the beginning of the day. For the S&P 500 and NASDAQ. Note with the exception of QQQ, all these numbers are positive, mildly positive, indicating in this position traders are short calls, market makers long calls, hence the positive gamma, and they have to trade against price edge their delta exposure. And that will no longer be the case tomorrow if this uh, move down continues. These very likely um, will, sh will certainly shift lower and potentially into negative gamma. All the, again, all the index products trading below their volatility triggers. All right, so put uh, uh, Vanna definitely coming into play for today. All right, so let's move on and take a look at some setups now. All right, I'm going to start with the S&P 500. So everything that we've looked at so far, other than book map, is based on static data. That's updated once a day. Spot Gamma takes open interest data, applies their algorithms to come up with the levels, the Gamma Notional and... That's what we were taking a look at. That's what I use for my, my positional analysis. Now let's move on to execution, move on to real time, start with the S&P 500. And I'm going to take a look, as always, first at what options traders have been doing today. All right, so this is the hero signal. This is available to Spot Gamma subscribers. What this is showing is options trades and market maker hedging activity in real time. HERO, H-I-R-O, stands for Hedging Impact Real-Time Options. There are two charts that we can take a look at, two signals that we can take a look at for the S&P 500. The first is the index signal. That's what, what I'm calling the index signal. What this chart is showing is options trades and market maker hedging activity for a combined signal of SPX, SPY, XSP and ES futures. There are two lines on this chart. The first line is price for SPX, and the second line 
is the hero signal. A falling hero signal indicates traders are taking negative delta options positions. They are buying puts and or selling calls. A rising hero signal indicates traders are taking positive delta options positions. They're buying calls and or selling puts. All right, so that is the index signal. And then there's the equity signal. What this chart is showing is options trades and market maker hedging activity for all 500 stocks in the S&P 500 index. And this chart, it, it varies from day to day. Typically, the index signal is a little bit more noisy, but can sometimes provide a leading indicator. So let's zoom in. Let's zoom in. Let's take a look at full screen. <clears throat> All right, so what this chart is showing is the hero signal in both the index, this price, price again, SPX, in a very narrow consolidation until the options trades, options traders started aggressively taking uh, negative delta positions. Note this peak reverses lower pretty sharply. Looks like some large block orders there, those vertical lines. And price breaks lower pretty sharply. And again, below this cluster of levels here, this was the spot gamma implied move day low and the volatility trigger there at 55.95, 5600 key gamma strike. All right, I'm going to shift to puts and calls so we can get more clarity about what traders are doing. The orange line is for calls, blue line for puts. I'll go back to the go back to the equity signal in just a minute. I thought it was a little bit easier to read today. So here for that first hour or so, hero line was pretty flat. Then starting right around 1035, orange line, blue line started moving in the same direction indicating traders are selling calls and buying puts. The directional line is ter in terms of delta. So again, orange line, blue line moving down. That's a very powerful directional indicator, in this case bearish. Traders again selling calls, buying puts. Market makers take the opposite side of the trade. In this case, they are hedging their delta exposure by selling ES futures. All right, let's move on now to the equity signal. I'm going to zoom in to the morning. All right, recently, these peaks in the call signal have been very good bearish reversal signals. This first one was a little bit late, but notice from the open traders are buying puts. This is the equity signal buying puts in the SB500. They take a little break and that resumes right around 1030. Then right around 1035, there's another peak in the call line, another call reversal signal. And starting around 1035, blue line, orange line, again, moving in the same direction, very powerful directional indicator. In this case, Moving down, very bearish signal. All right, so let's go take a look at Bookmap now. Let's go back to the S&P 500, ES Futures and Bookmap. And let's zoom in to about the first, first three hours here. So we can take a closer look at this in Bookmap. Again, ES Futures. The volume dots in book map are showing market buy minus sell. 
Green volume dots indicate more buyers than sellers. Magenta dots indicate more sellers than buyers. So notice in this consolidation, ES was making a series of lower highs just by a little bit and then broke below this pattern as traders started taking negative delta positions in the S&P 500 index, SPX, SPY, ES futures, as well as the S&P 500 stocks, mainly the MAG7 stocks. Price breaks lower, aggressive sellers come in. All right, so let's take a look at some of the other clues in Bookmap. What this light blue line is showing is large traders with iceberg orders. So as price was in this consolidation, this is showing that large traders were selling ES contracts with iceberg orders they used to hide their size. And notice as price starts moving down, they start buying. Pretty typical behavior for large traders. Buying weakness, selling strength. Cumulative volume delta is shown by this dark blue line. That starts to move lower. As you can see, the volume dots, aggressive sellers come in. And then as price moves lower, sell stop orders shown by the yellow line on the subchart also help the fuel to move lower. All right, so it took, took some patience, waiting almost um, well over an hour after the cash open for this to play out. Again, it was a little bit more clear in the NASDAQ. All right, so there's the short setup this morning. And again, remember, options traders took their foot off the gas for a while. Looks like they started taking negative delta positions again right around 1 o'clock. Let's go back to Hero. All right, so in the equities, options traders take the foot off the gas. Slight bullish bias. And then just after, let's say right around 115, orange line shifts lower. Blue line shifts lower. Price moves lower. All right, so again, to wrap up the S&P 500 here. Traders buying puts from the open to call reversal signals in the S&P 500 equity signal and then really gets uh, started going around 1035 with the call line, blue line, moving definitively lower. All right, let's move on to NASDAQ now. And I'm going to close full screen for a moment. All right, so just like the S&P 500, there are two signals that we can take a look at for NASDAQ. This is the index signal for NASDAQ. Showing a combined signal of options trades and market maker hedging activity for a combined signal of NDX and QQQ. Pretty noisy signal today, not much help. So let's move on. So just like the S&P 500, again, there are two signals. That's the index signal. And here's the equivalent of the, the equity signal for NASDAQ. This is the MAG7 signal showing options trades and market maker hedging activity for a combined signal of the stocks known as the Magnificent Seven. Apple, Amazon, Google, Meta, My, Meta Microsoft, NVIDIA, and Tesla. So really, you could say the S&P 500 equity signal is the MAG7 plus 493. So let's, we'll watch this signal, zoom in. Very similar to the S&P 500 equity signal, since this is really driving. The call reversal signals were a little bit more pronounced here, a little bit easier to read, these call reversal signals. But again, traders buying puts from the open 
right around 1030, start buying puts again. The second call reversal signal, price moves lower. All right, here's NASDAQ, NQ Futures and Bookmap. And again, reversals at key levels. First reversal with that first peak, call reversal signal in the call line, right around 945. The next was right around 1035. Again, when the call, call line, put line started moving sharply lower. So price trading below the volatility triggers. Again, for NDX, actually after, after this move, trading below for QQQ above, and then for NDX. All right, so I thought today the easiest read was the MAG7 signal and NASDAQ as far as the indexes go. All right, so that is the <clears throat> that is the <clears throat> um, index signal, the index setups. All right, so now let's move on and take a look at some stocks. So at this point, I don't know if there's uh, <clears throat> much point in doing this or not. The uh, YouTube signal is lagging so much. I'm just going to go ahead and stop that stream to YouTube. And note, I am still recording. And Dan, I began recording uh, just after the just after I started. So there's probably no need to stitch anything together. I'm recording the entire session since I saw there was a lag in <coughs> in um, YouTube. All right, so I'm going to stop streaming. Again, I am still recording, so the entire recording will be available on YouTube later on. All right, so let's move on. Let's take a look at some stocks. So just like the indexes, the theme of the day is hedge walls. And just as a reminder, the hedge wall is for single stocks, volatility trigger for indexes. Hedge wall, again, for single stocks, similar impact as the volatility trigger for indexes. That is the point where volatility is expecting to start increasing. So below, below that level, below the hedge wall, just like the volatility trigger, uh, I'm expecting volatility to increase. And above, looking for more mean reversion. So above the volatility, uh, the hedge wall, looking more for mean, uh, mean reversion and below for more momentum trading and these levels can act as support and resistance, just like the volatility triggers. All right, so first is Amazon, um, AMD. So let's go to AMD first. So AMD, note the hedge wall at 150. Traders selling, uh, the, the signal is a little bit noisy, but traders definitely selling calls and buying puts in Amazon. So let's go take a look at Bookmap now and how price react around, reacted around that uh, AMD, I'm sorry. How price reacted around that level 150. All right, so here's the 150 hedge wall right here. Price reverses lower at the open makes a series of lower highs as traders were selling calls and buying puts, trading below VWAP, finally finding support at 145, though the high liquidity at that level. Those are limit buy orders in the order book, and those that high number of limit orders can act as a magnet for price. The 
indicators that I have in subchart for I still have cumulative volume delta and for stocks I like to look at the market pulse price change indicator and these extremes in this case for a downtrend these extremes shown by bright green bright red can confirm a deeper pullback for an entry in this case for short. All right, so let's go back to Hero now. Hero for AMD again. Resistance at the hedge wall. Expecting volatility to increase. Looking for momentum down to the 145 high level of liquidity. And note, this is a very typical pattern. Options traders take the foot off the gas right around mid-morning, they actually start buying calls and selling puts. Price tries to break lower, and now they've started selling calls again. Put line fairly flat. All right, so quick move down as price below, broke below the hedge wall as traders were selling calls and buying uh, buying puts. All right, the next is Amazon. Sorry, oops. All right, for Amazon, I did draw this in. This is 172.50. This is the hedge wall for Amazon, 172.50. Price broke below that level, broke below VWAP, started making a series of lower highs, made it down to the 170 high liquidity target. All right, let's see what options traders are doing in Amazon. All right, so Amazon, just like AMD, Selling calls, buying puts, shown by the falling orange line, falling blue line. 170 is the key delta strike. That is not a, uh, a spot gamma level that I normally look at, but that, uh, that was where the, all that liquidity was concentrated. All right, so that's Amazon. Breaks below the 172.50 hedge wall, looking for higher volatility, more momentum as price breaks below that level. All right, the next is Google. Very similar story. Price breaks, breaks below the 170, 165 hedge wall. Again, a hero signal, a little bit noisy, but traders were selling calls and buying puts. Let's see what options traders, uh, let's see what uh, book map looks like for Google. All right, remember 165 hedge wall. Opening print right around that level. As shown by the large magenta volume dot. Looks like price, price did trade briefly higher very bearish looking all the magenta volume dots price breaks sharply lower that's a very uh, sharp move for Google as it moves below its 165 hedge wall aggressive sellers as traders were taking negative delta positions all right that's Google also trading below its hedge wall let's take a look at Microsoft All right, for Microsoft, 415 is the hedge wall. Also opening print right at that level. Price breaks lower. Sharp move lower below VWAP. Let's see what options traders are doing in Microsoft. All right, this is actually pretty typical for Microsoft. I'm going to zoom in just to the opening to 
clean this up a little bit. All right, so on Microsoft, these vertical lines are large block orders, institutional orders. So in this case, and this was really kind of the, uh, the initial signal, other than the break below the uh, hedge wall, this initial signal, this sharp move lower, and the blue line and the orange line indicates a large institution was buying puts and just a, uh, less than a minute later selling calls. And this could be the, uh, the hedging reaction as well to this large block order. So again, the net was traders buying puts, selling calls, market makers take the opposite side of that and they have to sell stock to hedge their delta exposure. So large block order was the initial signal that happened at just after this peak in price, somewhere between 940 and 945. All right, so these large vertical lines, uh, typical of Microsoft, here's another large block order, very large block order, some institution buying large number of puts there. So let's go take a look at bookmap now. So there's that. There's that reaction with that first set of large block orders right around 945. So that was a pullback to VWAP confirmed by the market pulse price change indicator and then price broke lower down to the liquidity targets below. Those are limit buy orders shown by the heat map, the history of limb orders in the order book. And it looks like Microsoft finally found support at that last level of liquidity at 408. Now testing that level again. All right, the next stock is Tesla. And I will wrap up by taking a look at NVIDIA uh, for sure. All right, Tesla. All right, for Tesla, 210 is the, let me, let me do this. Let me adjust the screen a little bit. All right, for Tesla, 210 is the hedge wall. Looks like price briefly traded above that level, then broke lower. Below VOAP, market pulse price change indicator confirming the deeper pullbacks to VWAP for shorts. Let's see what options traders are doing. Let's zoom in. All right, so this, this is a very nice call reversal bearish call reversal pattern in Tesla right after the open, just a couple of minutes after the open. Initially, traders are buying calls and selling puts. That quickly reverses. That's just right around 9.33. Traders take negative delta positions. Price moves lower. And they quickly take their foot off the gas. Note the flow alert that comes in. In this case, signaling that an end to that initial move lower. Price consolidates. Then right around 1030, when the index has started to move lower, blue line, orange line start moving down and price breaks lower. All right, let's go back to. So overall, when we look at the entire day, this move down really went on until about 11.15 when options traders again took their foot off the gas and it looks like they've resumed buying puts and selling calls right around 1.30. All right, let's go back to book map. Here's the initial move lower. Trading below VWAP. Trading below the 210 hedge wall 
find support at the high liquidity at 205. Options traders take the foot off the gas. Then right around 1 o'clock, 1.30, Tesla finds resistance at VWAP. That's shown by the light blue line. Price breaks below the 205 level as traders zoom buying puts and selling calls. All right, let's take a look at NVIDIA now, the stock of the year. See what options traders are doing. All right, we'll take a look at NVIDIA first, and then uh, Hector wants to take a look at CrowdStrike. I had a, um, a problem with Bookmap earlier in the week, and I did have CrowdStrike in there, and I have not added it back in. So we can take a look at, at Hero for CrowdStrike, but um, not a Bookmap. I took that out. I was having a, a performance issue. I think that was more of a, a rhythmic data problem. All right, let's go take a look and see what options traders have been doing, how they're setting themselves up for NVIDIA earnings this afternoon. All right, so net for the day. Looking at notional value here, they are buying puts. They're also selling calls. And the call sellers much more aggressive than the than the uh, put buyers. You can just tell by the uh, difference in the notional value there. All right, let's zoom in a little bit. Note the key levels in play. 130 call wall on the upside, 125 key gamma strike. Price did break below that level. And Nvidia broke lower right at the same time as the uh, NASDAQ, or you could say the NASDAQ broke lower the same time as NVIDIA, right around 1030, 1035. Block order there. Somebody, large trader, selling calls. Price breaks lower, lower. Aggressive call sellers take the foot off the gas. Looks like some large lock orders of buying calls. Price versus higher. And note, in both cases, these block orders looks like they gave a slight leading indicator, in this case for a short and in this case for a long. All right, let's go back to book map. All right, so there's that break lower right around 1030. You can see all of the aggressive sellers. Cumulative volume delta trending lower from the open. Price breaks below the liquidity at the 125 key gamma strike, 124. 123, find support there. Some aggressive buyers start to come in. Now price finds resistance again at VWAP. And remember that large block orders, call buyers coming in just after 11, helping to move price break up, back up. But cumulative volume delta remains in a downtrend. All right, so that's NVIDIA. Again, net for the day. Traders buying puts and selling calls. Call sellers much more aggressive. And let's take a look at CrowdStrike for Hector. And then we'll call it a day. All right, CrowdStrike. Uh, just like NVIDIA, traders buying puts and selling calls. Note the notional value much smaller than, than NVIDIA. No spot gamma levels in play for CrowdStrike. But net for the day, traders are buying puts and selling calls, price moving lower, call, sire, call sellers more aggressive. All right, last call for stocks or questions. All 
All right, just uh, wrap up with a few announcements again. Remember, Bookmap is encouraging everyone to join us in Discord for a better streaming experience, a better experience all around. You can, the, the chat is persistent. You can ask questions at any time. You can see my index relationships, my daily expected moves, my post, as well as any other conversation in the options dash Jug chat channel, as well as all the other channels in Bookmap Discord. So the steps you need to take, first of all, you need to subscribe to Bookmap if you're not already a subscriber. There is a free version. You need to join Discord, Bookmap Discord. You need to verify your account, and then you can join chat and join the streams in Discord. Again, everyone is welcome to join here. Again, remember Friday, big data coming up, PCE data. I will be in chat, but I will not be streaming on Friday. And of course, Monday again is the Labor Day holiday. And I will be off. So again, I will be off on Friday and Monday. I will be back a week from today on Wednesday. And so Razi wants to take a look at SMCI. So again, I don't have that in book map. We can see what options traders are doing. All right, so there you go, Sloterazzi. SMCI trading below its 500 put wall. Initially, traders were selling calls and buying puts. Took the foot off the gas. Price consolidated. Now it looks like they started to buy puts and sell calls, shown by the rising blue line, orange line. Now SMC trying to move higher. All right, I'm going to wrap it up with that. Everyone, thank you very much for watching. Thanks for your questions and comments. Please join me in Discord, and I will see you next Wednesday. Thanks again. Bye, and have a great holiday weekend.